Mike McCool here. I'm in the Royal Examiner studio, and today with me is Sheriff Mark Butler. Sheriff Butler, it's good to see you here again. It's been a month or so since we talked to you last. And good seeing you. I, I know when we say we're 90 some days into the your first year, and we ended up with a worldwide pandemic on your hand. So yeah, who'd have thought, right? <laughs> uh, I definitely, um, you know, we're very fortunate though, Mike. Um, we hired a major right off the bat who is emergency management certified, um, very well diversed in this and has a lot of resources for us. So the sheriff's office is actually uh, extremely prepared uh, for this situation. And, you know, that's why we, we really haven't seen a lot of, uh, you know, hands up not knowing what to do. We're, right. Our sheriff's office has been well prepared and we were starting to um, prepare our agency probably a good month and a half ago. Well, one of the things you uh, campaigned on was training. You said that you want to make sure that all your officers and administration and everyone is trained and first class. Yeah. So uh, this is a good example why we need to be trained. Exactly. I mean, they, we've been able to work really well. With, and you know what? This has actually been... Uh, I understand that it's not a blessing what we're all going through. Um, but as far as logistics wise, um, the town and myself, town police, and myself, and uh, town council, we talk on a regular basis, probably two to three times a week, uh, as well as the fire and rescue and the board of supervisors. So we're actually building a lot of bridges that I don't think were there in the past. Well, I could tell that it seems that when I see you out and about, I, I can tell that the police and the uh, the sheriff's office is working better together. It just seems the camaraderie is 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 back. You know, I really like, uh, Kale and I, our Chief McGillis and I sat down and talked for a good two, three hours one day. Um, and we both have similar views. We don't agree on everything, but we do agree that working together is going to be better than having separate entities and... Pounding you know, heads. And, yeah, and pounding <laughs> heads. So uh, through this epidemic is we've been able to actually um, get some MOUs going and start to uh, mesh together, work work cohesively together. Well, what are some of the things that we don't see behind the scenes that the Sheriff's Department's doing? Well, it's funny because even though there's a pandemic and, you know, and I know it's affecting everybody in the whole world and Warren County as well. Um, but it's still business as usual. Business as usual for us, um, and you know our our deputies are really motivated to do the right things, and we've put in some put in place certain procedures to actually um, enhance community policing. So if you see, there's a lot more deputies patrolling through the town and the county. Um, we want to put as many people out there being as visible as possible and we want to increase our community policing so well i've noticed that uh lieutenant uh, seal robbie seal has been busy keeping the public informed of what's going on as well and he's a good asset to the sheriff's department uh, Ra uh, lieutenant seal is a blessing um he's motivated and he's exciting he's he he's is. a positive individual <laughs> he he really is and you know that man works hard that man works really hard and we were very fortunate to steal him from the police department. <laughs> well, you know, um, he's helping out the town, too, because he he, he's uh, working with them. I think he's doing your job and their job both. <laughs> well, and that's kind of what I think intrigued him about it was he was able to expand his his outreach. And, right. you know, him with the Salt Triad, the seniors, and, and there, and now he's getting able to get into a lot of other things. He really is. This just, way he's not stepping on anybody's toes because, you know. Right. right? He, well, there, you know, and that's just it. He's he's really motivated for it. So uh, he, was, he was a perfect person for that position. Well, I we had a release from the state police uh, uh, the other day about uh, what's going on with the uh, coronavirus and things. And they said, you know, people are all worried about they were going to be stopped along the road and see, because some states are doing this. They are. And, uh, you know, and they're not going to have traffic checkpoints and they're not going to stop you and just ask you where you're going. They said they were really, uh, really relying on compliance. And it seems like the public in general is 
is complying with the governor's orders. You know, and I, I see it pretty much so for Warren County as a whole. Is you know we're really uh, we're really policing our own inside the county. We're doing what we're supposed to do, and that's probably why we don't have as many confirmed casualties as other counties. Um, I just want to reassure everyone that you know the only Dr. Green from you know Lord Fairfax area. He says the only way you can actually stop this virus is by starving it. And that means by actually staying home, staying away from people, protecting you, or protecting yourselves just by mere just staying away. Right. Um, and I think we're really kind of doing that. Right. Uh, and I think that's why we're that way. Right. Well, we washed our hands really good before we started we the interview. <laughs> and we won't touch our face, right? right? right. <laughs> um, I really hope that you know people to people listen to what the governor's saying um and continue and i know it's stressful and I'm, i have a family as well so do all my deputies um we have families at home and we have to protect them and so we have to look at every different aspect of okay is this person um because they're older are they more susceptible or and so on yeah so we have to put them in different positions um and it makes it difficult, and you have to think out of the box, but we've definitely been doing that, but keeping up with um, business as usual. Wow. You know, we still have to, um, for instance, we have the two bloodhounds that we have coming in, which was achieved by a grant. So it really hasn't cost Warren County anything yeah. to get something. Dogs make wonderful officers. I mean, they are really they do. They are they are harder working sometimes than the people we have. But they and uh, and they don't uh, they don't take vacations. You know, <laughs> right? And then we added another one, which is a uh, a um, bomb dog, which very can you you think about it? Say you have an incident at school, or a government building, or anywhere, and this dog can actually go in and clear the whole scene and oh, get it's just back. a matter of minutes compared to what compared a person what, would do. Yeah, several people. And if you look back to Columbine, there were, it was months after Columbine had even opened before they found all the IDs. So it was one of the things we thought was extremely important, and we did a lot of research to find the right company to come in, assess our situation, our dogs, our area, and help help us build a solid canine program. Do you see any uh, uh, any uptick of uh, domestic disturbances with all everybody at close quarters? Well, there's, there's talk about you know that happening. Well, I think anytime you spend a lot of time <laughs> with your family, <laughs> it's kind of like us at work too. You know, you That's gotta right. have your disagreements, and oh, yeah. you know the stress. Everybody's stress is building right now. So, what we're really hoping that you do is just. Take a step back, reevaluate your situation that we have, and we'll all get through this together. Yeah, breathe, count to ten. Right, yeah. go outside and you know, yeah. have a seat. Yell, yell at the yell at the sky. That might release some tension. Have a seat on your front porch and just reflect. But you know, once we get through this, and who knows how long? No one really knows how long. Um, they can project and assume, but we all know what that does, right? So let's take it day by day right now is what we're hoping that we can do, take it day by day, try to stay as healthy as possible. Um, we're gonna take measures in our policing, um, but you will see more and more law enforcement in your areas, and that's what we're really striving to do. So, is, you, so you're trying to make a presence, you're gonna let people at least see the cars driving around and Correct, and, and uh, be we're available? still gonna be proactive. Um, we're gonna be proactive, probably more so than most, and you know, we, we're just trying to be creative with our work schedule to keep our officers segregated so it doesn't spread. Has there been much changes in the court? Because they've changed some court dates around. Because, you know, that's one of the responsibilities of the sheriff's office is to uh, take care of the court system. So I'm just curious there. Yeah, and that would fall more on um, Judge Sharp and Commonwealth Attorney Bell. Um, our job is pretty much the excuse me the security aspect. Security aspect, but that still goes on whether you have one case or fifty cases, doesn't it? Correct. That's uh, the thing; it doesn't matter uh, what's going on. It, it takes the same number of people to handle no cases as lots of cases, so right. you have to be prepared. So you know, but it's given us time to re um, reflect and assess uh, this ninety days. If I could have told you, we would have been where we at, where we are at right now. 
Um, who would have known that a pandemic was coming yeah, on? And, I'm sure it's changed um, your your schedule a little bit, a little your few of your priorities. It changed the schedule, the budget, and and everything else. So everything right now is uh, it's more of a need than a want, and you know it's hard to tell you what your needs are going to be two weeks, a month six months from now. Well, I do know, uh, as talking to you before the election, that you had actually started preparing uh, things and put things in place so that when you, if, when you were elected, we won't right. say if you were elected, right. but, you know, you were positive about it and you ran a really good campaign. But I do know, talking to you, that you had uh, mentioned certain things of training, uh, people that you were looking to, uh, you know, make some changes and in investigations and different things like that. And, and I know that you implemented those as soon as you were uh, came into the office. So you kind of got the, ahead of the game there. Yeah, our, our staff is really solid. Um, and that goes from the youngest deputy to the dispatch, our communication sections, but we can always improve. Our command staff is really diligent and working hard. Um, and we're figuring out creative ways with the pandemic to still find the areas of training and need that we have so we can still move forward and do this by f keeping us safe as well. But training never stops. How, how's the um, in your um, employment? Do you have any openings? or? Actually, at this point in time, we're full. Full up. Uh, there was some talk uh, in the past about the civilian aspect of using civilians, incorporating more, um, I don't want, I want to say, you know, civilians into your workforce, but looking for volunteers and doing some, because all part of this community policing, that's something you're still going to try to keep pushing even while we're... Uh, yes. Uh, we actually hired a part-timer just the other day to, that's a civilian to help us in our evidence area. Now the person has... 20 some years experience in law enforcement right. so it was very easy to bring the subject the subject in well that's a police talk got the subject you hear that <laughs> <laughs> the individual sorry um but yeah he, it's a wealth he's a wealth of knowledge and has the integrity and honor that we're looking for to uphold inside um we will always look for different ways to not only save money but be more effective well, we're all adapting our businesses to the new model, which I think, you know, even when we come out of this, things will be different. I think thing, I think you're right. And one thing that I'm trying to do is, and our agency is really reaching for, is this is a great time to really put forth the community policing. And as you'll see, you'll see more cars in the areas of Target, Walmart, Rural King, where we have a group of um, more people coming, and that's where I'm asking. You know, let's let's really be smart about it. If it's extremely packed, try not to go. You know, go at a different time. It's Maybe all about common it. sense, isn't it? it? It really is, and you know, and for the most part, I think we're doing all right. Um, I I really thank the small businesses. You know, our churches are even coming up with. We we talk with the churches quite frequently. Um, about how they can handle their services. And actually, an individual about a month ago, we talked about doing a drive-in service. Right. So they were already putting that in place before others even came out with it. So it was, it was refreshing to see that. that Because right now, worship is a good place to, place to go. It is. I think, you know, we are... We are spiritual people. We are. I mean, uh, it's like a three-legged stool. You know, you can't knock one leg out and expect us to be, you know, upright. So right. I think we need to be important to keep that aspect uh, in our lives. I agree. Um, and, you know, I think if we look at that in all different a a aspects as far as recreation and because you do have to get, you get out and do, you got to get out and do something. You can't change your routine so drastic right. that it becomes... Uh, you know, you're all hyped up over some. You get too excited, you know. But to, anxiety. But let's but let's just do this smart with common sense. Keep our groups to minimal. Keep your distancing, and and take care of yourself. Drink a lot of fluids and so forth. I'm right. no doctor by no, any means. Yep. Didn't play one on TV. Right. <laughs> <laughs> not, well, not no. <laughs> not that you want to admit anyway. Right. Well, Sheriff, I really appreciate you stopping by. You know, you're always welcome to come anytime. I knew, I do know uh, we're, we have uh, some programs with Robbie. He's going to be coming in, trying to put something together on a regular basis so we can keep 
people in Warren County and Front Royal well, that's, informed? That's one of the big things Robbie and I talked about over two years ago was we wanted this message um, to where we can reach out to the community and tell them what the scams are. And I'm saying right now, if someone calls you on the phone, if you don't get a certified letter from the mail, don't don't respond to it because it's a good chance it's a scam. Same thing with the internet. Just be very careful. And I know we're home, and we're occupying time and trying to kill time and do things. But um, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Right. And just be safe and cognizant. I just got off the phone with my mother. She's 90 years old. Well, it says to enter my password and click here because of micro. I said, don't click on anything. <laughs> yeah, no. And, and one of the things that we're gonna, you're going to see a more increase is our deputies may be calling you. So if you call in for a past occurred or, or something, instead of us sending a deputy out there, because we have to protect them as well. Sure. We'll probably call and say, hey, okay, let's let's see if we can't do this by phone. Right. Um, but if if it's an absolute, got to have the law, law enforcement, we're coming. If this isn't going to change us. Our deputies are going to do what they swore to do, and that's protect and serve. They might talk to you three, four feet away, but they're right. six feet away, right. excuse me. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think there's a lot of programs. Our community's really unifying, coming together with and helping, like all the children that are being fed and so on and so forth. So I think you can see the town and the county is really coming together. Um, we just got to be patient. We got to be patient. We'll get through this. This this too shall pass. It will. And we'll, you know what? We'll be stronger. That's what I say. We're all in this together. We, and we, we are strong. What was your campaign? We, we, we can make a difference. We can make a difference. Now we are making a difference. Exactly. Again, Mark, I really appreciate you coming in, and you're welcome to come as often as you'd like. Thanks, Mike. Right, I appreciate th it. Thank you.